Alright, before we start this video, I just wanted to send out a special thanks to everyone that helped this channel grow. I enjoy reading all of your comments and I'm grateful for you helping us reach 300 subscribers before the new year. Thank you all so much. So the randomly selected comment from the randomly selected video during the Nomad contest should have a congratulations reply from me with instructions on how to claim your prize. Unfortunately, if I do not hear from you within 7 days, I will have to draw another winner, so don't miss out. And, if you didn't win this time, look out for my next giveaway soon. Thanks again, ladies and gents. This is a hobby for me, and not my full-time job. So to get this far, and to be able to share my thoughts and talk to all of you, means a lot to me. I appreciate all of you, and best wishes during this holiday season. What's up, Star Citizens? Just finished making my own best and bad buys before they close up Tobin Expo Center and kick me out of here. Must say I'm sad to see the show go. The IAE is my favorite event of the year because of course I can buy anything my heart desires. Unfortunately, I live in the States though and this fell on Thanksgiving weekend. So I had to balance editing with spending time with my family. So I didn't get to finish editing all of my floor tours before I got back to my day job which I desperately need right now to afford all these impulsive purchases. So I'll release those as a look back at, the, at this week's uh, events. I hope you guys can still enjoy them as much as I enjoyed making them. Since it's the end though, I thought, for fun, why not do a best and worst of IE2951 episode? Starting with one of the best things about IE this year. As a huge Jax McCleary fan, I was so glad to see that he was back this year. This year, better than ever. On top of the normal Jax hijinks, this year we got an intimate look into who Jax and Jimmy really are when the cameras were off. I really enjoyed the storytelling. These are always entertaining, but this time I found myself caring about the characters and rooting for Jax in the end. If you don't feel something in the last episode, you might want to get your pulse checked. Looking forward to seeing the return of Jax, and I must say, great job CIG. Keep it coming. Well, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is all about all the vehicles in the Star Citizen universe. Having them all on display, a free flight where you can try out anything you'd like, and really just get immersed in the game. And with that in mind, I thought we'd take a look at the best of the new vehicles that were introduced this year at the show. These are my picks for the worst to best vehicle debuts of the show. And for me, the worst this year was the Anvil Spartan. Not much excitement about this ground vehicle, as it feels like a repackaged Ballista and a Neutrum. That being said, I did pick up four of these for the LTI tokens alone. But we'll talk about that later. And coming in fourth place is the Argo Raft. This one was a little bit of a disappointment for me. Which I know is strange for a ship that was hyped going into the conference and an exciting day that it debuted. But at the end of the day, it was just another hauler right now. When the container gameplay is here, my space truck and heart is going to enjoy this one a lot more, I have a feeling. But for right now, it's just kind of lackluster and, you know, just another hauling ship right now in the verse. You can take a look at my in-depth first look at the raft floating around here on the screen. Alright, and moving on to third best is the Redeemer, which is basically a baby hammerhead. I just didn't think this one had as much fanfare because we did see the shell of it on the floor of Invictus, so I think going into this we had a pretty good idea of what we were going to see. Still a great ship though, and another video I need to finish editing, so look for that one to be released soon. And a close second best for me goes to the Ares, Ion, and Infernos Starfighters. These are just great fighters to have. And you guys even got me to open up my wallet for an Ion in your comments to my Inferno first look video, which is uh, floating around here somewhere. But you guys got me wondering if the Ion is uh, superior to the Inferno. Anyway, these fighters live up to the hype so far and can do more, more than just capital ship hunting. 
They practically stole the thunder from the Redeemer this year. And I'm looking forward to great uh, gameplay and even more great content for these two ships. <laughs> How you doing? Gotta love the friendly NPCs at these shows. Now the number one best debut this year at IE2951 has to go to the Misk Odyssey. I think this ship stole the show and it's the talk of the town right now. Finally a ship that actually gives us reason to think, hmm, there might just be a better ship than the Carrick out there. No longer is the Carrick a slam dunk, and I think we have reason to actually consider another ship now. And not only that, but the mining and refining capabilities of this ship has it taking a shot at even the RSI Orion a little bit. Although I don't, although I don't think it's going to be anywhere near the scale of what the Orion can do. Anyway, I think we have a new compelling ship here, and one I'll do a separate deep dive video on soon. But this concept stole the show in my view, and has to be the most anticipated ship coming out of the show, I believe. She's probably making her final purchases right now, too. And now, my pick for worst manufacturer day, hands down, goes to Chris Roberts Space Industries. Just nothing really new to see here. It's pretty much the same layout as last year, and the Constellations were one of the first ships to be released, so the lineup is really starting to feel old. This manufacturer needs the Scorpius on the floor next year, or they're going to be my worst pick again. Now usually Drake is my pick for best manufacturer on the floor. But this year, like RSI, they just started wheeling out the same old lineup. So as much as it pains me, I'm going to have to go with Argo this year. They debuted a new ship in the raft and generated a lot of buzz. I think most people tried to make it for either Misk or Argo Day just to see what all the buzz was about. And at least Argo put the raft on the floor, a new ship we hadn't seen before, and let us explore and take it in for ourselves. That's what I want to see for a ship debut. Now throughout the show, I've had some fun with the best and bad buys segment. But I want to be clear, I believe in this project and what they're trying to do here. It's ambitious and expensive, so if you enjoy the game in any capacity, I think we should support it and its efforts. However, at this point, they are well funded, and let's be honest, some products are better deals than others. But it's all subjective and a little bit controversial, which makes this a fun topic to talk about. Luckily, they've given us a lot of options to support this project if we want to. And if you're not sold on it, by all means, you should not back this. But if you do, I think you'll find hours of enjoyment here, despite the bugs and the craziness of playing an early access alpha product. On a personal note, some may call me a whale. It didn't happen overnight, but I just haven't felt as passionate about a game and starships since my old Star Wars Galaxy days. So I've probably made more bad than best buys over the years. That are logically, maybe not the best decision, but in my heart, I enjoyed it and I only spend what I can afford. Doesn't mean I don't wonder what the heck I was doing buying a ship that I can't crew. Instead of feeling bad about it, I look back at it and laugh and try to learn from the experience. And it's that experience I'm trying to share with you. I'm not trying to make anybody here feel bad about pledges or purchases. This is purely for entertainment purposes only, so let's have fun with some ships. And please, if you like a ship and you just want it, and you can put food on the table, the rent's going to be paid, and the kids are still going to go to college, then by all means, what's wrong with getting that ship and enjoying it? Life in games should be fun. And with that said, let's have some fun with my picks for best and worst deals of the show. <laughs> Pretty sure these guys are making some best and bad buys right now behind me. So my first best deal of the show is going to go to one of my favorites. If you guys have watched my videos, you know I talk about this ship all the time. That's right, the Space Penguin, the Avenger Titan at $55. 
The ship that's basically the price of any AAA game right now is going to give you an entry level into Star Citizen, but also the capability to haul, carry a small light vehicle like the PTV buggy, and do uh, bounty hunting missions and mercenary missions. I really think it's one of the best starter ships that you can get. And it can springboard you into any other ship. You don't really have to purchase anything else but this ship alone. However, let's be honest. If you do end up liking a verse, you most likely are going to make some more purchases after that. But if you're the logical, responsible type, this is the only ship you ever really need to get. As you'll be able to earn money to buy any other ship that you want in the game. You have to give it to CIG. Even though they've given us options to obtain ships within the game without spending any real world money, these ships are so compelling that they're just cleaning up. And for many working adults like myself, sometimes a little shortcut to the ship that you want isn't such a bad thing. I don't think this game's pay to win in any shape or form. And just because you can buy a ship right away, doesn't mean you're going to be able to use it or have guaranteed success or wealth without putting in the time. Next up for my second best buy is going to go to the Nomad Starter Package at $75. It was discounted at 20% for the show. And I believe it's going to stay on sale for a few more days after, so it might be worth the pickup. This starter ship actually carries a considerable amount more than the Titan. And you can also carry a Grey Cat Rock if you squeeze it in the back of the bed of the ship. It doesn't really feel like a starter ship to me, but I guess they're starting to classify it as one. So, it might be worth paying a little bit more for this one. Hopefully enough time if you're new to the game to try it out during the free fly to see if this game is for you. But if you didn't, and you're not comfortable even paying $55 for an Avenger Titan, the Auroras are still a great deal. Not my favorite ship, but you can get them as low as $20 or $30 right now. Alright, my next Best Buy is going to go to the Misk Endeavor at $350. I like to think of this ship as a build your own capital ship capable of doing a lot of different gameplay when it's released. Right now it's still in concept and, well, it's probably going to be in concept for many years to come. <laughs> but I think right now it's really at a great deal of $350. It's most likely going to go up a lot in price when it get, when it finally gets released in the game. So only for the real true believers, take a look at the Misk Endeavor. This ship can play as a capital ship. It could be your base in space. It can be a flying hospital if you kit it out. Or a lab laboratory. You can grow some crops in there. I know if I was going to be a space drug dealer, this would be the ship that I'd want to get. Pretty much does everything. Even a little bit of some light exploration. Uh, maybe not the best in combat, but you're going to be able to carry fighters in the hangar bay if you do need to do all that stuff. And the front detaches as a slight cargo ship also. So I really think this is a ship worth checking out. Maybe I'll do a deep dive on this one later on. All right, let's talk about my worst buys for the show. Starting with the Anvil Valkyrie at $375. Don't get me wrong, this is an awesome dropship to have, but the gameplay is not really in the game right now. And I myself use it basically just to haul around rocks. It is a nice ship, but I feel at $375, you could probably put it on something better. Like the Endeavor I talked about, for example. Or maybe put it towards something like the Carrick, which is one of the ultimate ships in the game right now. Next up is the Anvil Terrapin at $220. The game failure for this ship just really isn't there right now. So it's about as slow as it is useless right now in the game. But it does look cool and that's why it's collecting dust in the corner of my hangar. Next for me is the RSI Mantis at $150. I just don't get enough out of this ship to justify the price to me. But she is an attractive ship. You should probably look at buying in game. Now one of my epic worst buys of the show has to be the Prowler at $440. This alien exotic drop ship doesn't give you very much value. Sure it's cool and a maneuverable ship to fly, but it has no cargo carrying capability and it's kind of stuck in a niche role carrying troops just like the Valkyrie for gameplay that it really isn't there right now. And as much as I love Crusader, I can't get behind the ATU Hercules right now at $750. I 
just don't feel like it's bringing enough to the table right now. Bombing gameplay really isn't in the game right now. And it's really unclear to me how much you'll be using this feature in the future as well too. I'd feel much better going for a C2 Hercules at a much cheaper price and using its cargo carrying capability to springboard you into other uh, professions and money making opportunities. And finally, at $3,000, the Javelin is the most expensive JPEG in the universe. But at least you can see the UEE flying it for Invictus. But don't get me wrong, if you own this ship, I envy your spending power. <laughs> but at this price point, I just can't justify it in my head. Especially f because for the most part with my schedule, I'm a solo player, mostly. And you're going to need a good sized crew to man this ship. This one should be reserved for the large orgs. However, if uh, $3,000 isn't a lot to you, eh, more power to you. Just add me as a friend in game. It's Astro Nesto. And speaking of adding me in the game, if you're new to Star Citizen and you want to start out with 5,000 EUCs of in game credit to use, feel free to use my code here. It helps support me and you get free money. So, well, game money, by the way, not real money. <laughs> But, you know, if you want to support my work, I appreciate it. If not, use your favorite content creator's code, or even your best friend's. And finally, ending this on a good note, let's talk about the best in show ships. Best in show day is about commemorating the winners of the ship showdown contest, which is basically an NCAA bracket style competition where we the players get to vote on the best starships in the Star Citizen universe. And the final four get showcased here, a special skin for the ship, and this year, additional swag like this leather jacket that I'm wearing right now. So to get these goodies, you just have to own one of the four ships here, or all of them. Origin 600i Explorer. For the King of Cargo, the Crusader Hercules C2 Starlifter. The Data and Cargo Smuggling Ship, the Mercury Star Runner from Crusader. Or this year's crowned champion, the MPUVC. Affectionately known in the verse as the Argo Cargo. That's right, the little engine that could had an unprecedented win this year. A feat that, let's be honest, will probably never ever be duplicated. But I could be wrong. While many see the Argo Cargo as the most useless ship in the verse, it is a very important ship in lore, and I even did a video advocating voting for it that you can see on one of the links above the screen. Love it or hate it, you have to admit that this year's ship showdown competition was probably filled with the most drama, and I think it actually got us to actually pay attention and care about the winners and who is moving on. It was just great fun, and I hope somehow we can duplicate the excitement next year. Personally, I enjoyed last year's skin a little bit more than this year's, but I think it's still a nice paint job. And these are all great ships. Even the Argo Cargo is fun to fly. It just needs a quantum. But I love this jacket. Might be a little bit cooler than the ship. So come on CIG. Surprise us next year and add a planetary quantum to this ship and make it really cool. Well, that's going to do it for this episode and this year's IAE. Look out for my look back videos of the remaining manufacturer days that I didn't get to highlight this week. Starting with Alien Day next. And if you like this video or just want to support my work and the channel, please leave a like and consider subscribing. As always, I humbly thank you for watching this video and wherever you are, fly safe out there. 
I'll see you next time. Right after I finish these last minute purchases.